Good morning, loved ones. How are you doing today? It is good to be alive. I'm hearing some dance music over here at the Starbucks in Puyallup, Washington. Some chill, groovy, laid back music. And it just feels good to be alive. I got my caffeinated beverage here. I am excited for what God is doing in my life and uh, I'm looking forward to sharing uh, this morning with you guys. Hey, good morning, Brother Mark. Looking forward to sharing uh, a little message. Uh, but before we do, I just want to say good morning. My name is Taylor Martin. I am a Christian hip hop artist from Washington State. And God is good. God is good. And yes, God changed my life. God saved my life. God has done so many beautiful things. Even through the hardest times, I've been able to rely on God and look to Jesus. And so this morning, I just want to share a quick message on the man without a vision will perish. <clears throat> the man without a vision will perish so even in psychology they talk about how humans are creatures of aim how we need a focal point we need a focus we need a target we need a bullseye they talk about this in the practice of psychology that humans go into a distressful state that is far greater uh, when they don't have an aim than they would go to when they do have an aim. So even in psychology, they let us know that it's very important to have an aim, whether it's for a conversation, whether it's for a song you're writing, whether it's for your day, for your month, for uh, my bro J Diamond was popping. Let's go. Shout out Triple R Ministries out there in Yakima doing a beautiful work in the Lord. Man, shout out my bro. You guys go follow him. It's my brother in Christ right there. Um, that it's very important to have an aim and a goal. And if psychology talks about this and states how it's important, how much more should we be invigorated when we see that the Bible says the same thing? In different words the ancient text that you if you're a believer in Christ base your life on has a passage that reveals to us that we should be people who have a vision for our future that it's actually dangerous to not have a vision it's actually the Bible says we'll perish if we don't have a vision that means Perish means die. The man without a vision will perish. So was it just any vision that we want to have? I don't think so. I don't think we just want to have... I mean, you can start there. You can start with the vision of what you think is right, but you're going to come into all sorts of problems and issues if this vision isn't given from God. Now, if the vision is given from God, you're still going to have issues. Pardon me. You're still going to have problems when walking out this vision that God has for your life. <clears throat> but it's better to live your life in the way that it was made to live for the purpose you were made to live than to try to live a purpose uh, than to try to live a vision that you don't have. So, there's this book called Man's Search for Meaning. Have you guys ever heard of it? Have you guys heard of that book, Man's Search for Meaning? I think it's Viktor Frankl, if I'm not mistaken. So, this dude, Viktor Frankl, was in the concentration camp. Now, if you can imagine for a second, being in a concentration camp, you don't have to go far to realize the utter horror and chaos 
to seeing children, babies murdered. The most atrocious acts of mankind all lumped together in one place. Now this man, Viktor Frankl, lived in the concentration camps. He actually made it out of the concentration camps to write this book. It was the mass slaughtering of Jewish people and people who were not of um, uh, uh, what they considered pure white breed descent. And Viktor Frankl wrote in this book, Man's Search for Meaning, what he noticed when somebody was about to die. He said it wasn't because they had lack of food. It wasn't because they had lack of cigarettes. It wasn't because they had lack of money. It was the light in their eye would go dim. The light in their eye would go dim because they lost their purpose. They lost their dream. They lost their vision for the future. The devil tries to take your hope. The devil tries to take your faith. The devil tries to take your vision. He wants to make you think that all that is here is all that is here. It's just what you could see. The devil tries to make you think that the only thing in life is what you can smell, hear, feel, and touch. But I'm here to let you know that the Holy Spirit is real. I'm here to let you know I feel the Holy Ghost right now on this live. I feel the Holy Spirit right now saying, I'm real. And God has a plan for your life. There's more to your life than where you are now. There's more to your life than what you've seen so far. The Lord God has a purpose and a plan for the next chapter of your life. Now, if you could only get a vision of it, if you could only get a glimpse of what God has for your life, if you could only get a sneak peek at what God is going to do in the future, I think it would give you hope. I think it would give you purpose to be able to fight through the trauma. I think it would give you purpose to be able to fight through the drama. I think it would give you strength when bad stuff happens that you know, yo, this might suck horribly right now, but I know God is going to use this for good. I know God is going to use this for my good. I'm going to let you know that God has a purpose for you. Jeremiah 29 11, one of the most bumper sticker scriptures that you see on t-shirts and decals for i know the plans that i have for you saith the lord plans to prosper you plans to give you a hope and a future never to harm you i come in the name of the living god to let everybody watching right now know that there is a god in heaven who has a plan and a purpose for the next chapter of your life and that includes this chapter where you're at now. God's using this season to prepare you for what's next. Don't give up hope. Don't cast off restraint. Another way to say that scripture, the man without a vision will perish, is to say, those who cast off restraint will perish. So when you have a vision for the future, when you have a vision, it's going to automatically give you restraint. It's going to automatically hold you back from doing certain things. As I'm becoming a single man, I know I want to still live a God-honoring life. And so there's women who hit me up, but I have restraint towards that. I'm, I don't want that. I'm, I appreciate it. I'm flattered. But you know what? I want Jesus. I want Jesus. I'm going to have a kingdom wife one day. I have restraint because I have a vision for God's future in my life. So there's this story that scientists share about rats. They had a bathtub full of water and they turned the lights off and they put rats in this water, in this bath. And the rats swam for a little while it's all dark in there and these rats are swimming right but these rats drowned after some time now they put the same kind of rats same exact water same exact room I'm getting chills right now but they had a beam of light coming in that room and these rats swam significantly 
longer. I don't remember if it was 10 times I'd have to go back and check. They swam significantly longer. Just because there was a beam of light shining in the room. Don't let the devil block you from seeing the beam of light shining in your situation. Don't let the devil block you from seeing the beam of hope of your future in Jesus Christ. Don't let the devil block you from seeing that vision that God has for your life or you'll die quicker than you would have if you would have held on to the promises of God. Keep faith. Keep hope. Keep your God dream. Don't let anything take your God dream. Don't let anybody take your God dream. You have to be careful who you go around. You have to be careful who you talk to. You have to be careful the situations you go in. There was a scripture in the Holy Bible when Yeshua HaMashiach Long haired Jesus was walking near a cliff. Literal Jesus. I just imagine a white robe. I don't know if he really had a white robe, but I imagine long hair. Yeshua HaMashiach walking near a cliff. And a crowd of angry haters was trying to throw this man off of the cliff. You know what Jesus did? He didn't stick around, argue. When these people were trying to push Jesus off a cliff, he snuck through the crowd and went on his way to his destiny. I think one of the reasons, even though Jesus came to die for our sins, he said, not today, Satan. I still have more I have to do. I'm not going to let you kill me. I'm not going to hang around people who's trying to drag me down. I'm not going to hang around people who's trying to put me down. I'm not going to hang around people who's trying to take me out prematurely. I got a cross I got to get to. Don't forget the cross you have to get to. Don't forget the purpose that God has for your life. Don't forget that cross that God has for you to carry and let people take you out prematurely. Keep your mind on the cross that you have to carry. Now the vision that God has for your life is not just for you. The vision that God created you for, God created you to be a blessing to others. God wants to bless you so you can bless others. It's not gonna be easy. It's not gonna be easy. There's a cross aspect to your vision. Yes, the vision is gonna excite different parts of your mind. It's gonna inspire you deep inside when you see wow god is gonna use me in a mighty way like joseph joseph had a dream taking it back to the old testament now so we had some new testament we're getting into the old testament some folks love old testament some folks love new testament it's all good it's all god's word but joseph colorful coat joseph had a dream that god gave him for his life and he was so excited for it he was so excited for it he was like yo my bros yo god is gonna do this but you know what they weren't they weren't they weren't feeling it they threw him in a pit they either felt insecure about it they felt like this man was bragging but you know what when they threw him in a pit it taught him a lot and he kept his dream he kept his dream. I'm only going to be a few more minutes, you guys. Joseph kept his dream. He had a dream when he was good. He was in the field. His bros threw him in the pit. That's like when life randomly happens to you and chaos randomly happens to you and you randomly get cheated on in your marriage. You randomly go through a bankruptcy. You randomly get fired. It wasn't even your fault. Life just happened. And you find yourself in a low place. I want to talk to people right now who's in a low place, but you know God gave you a dream. Keep your dream. Keep your dream. If God said it, it's going to come to pass. On the name of Jesus Christ, in the power of Yeshua HaMashiach, I declare to you, if God said it, it's going to come to pass. That's not my word. That's God's word. If God said it, it's going to come to pass. You might be in a low place. People might have done you wrong and dirty. Situations might have been out of your control that you couldn't. Uh, contain and you had a vision and you feel like is this going to come to pass I want to let you know don't let go of your vision don't 
Don't let go of the dream that God gave you. You're going to have to carry your cross. Jesus literally carried his cross. He knew why he came. And he let nothing keep him from that. You can't let anything keep you from your purpose. I don't care who it is. If it's a Christian girl who with the Holy Spirit and she's wearing just the right clothes and she says all the right verses and she says all the right things. You can't let any woman keep you from your purpose on this earth. You can't let any drug, you can't let any, any hang up. You can't let any insecurity, weakness, fear, doubt. You have to stay focused on God's mission for your life. Regardless, you don't need an amen from them. You don't need an amen from him. You need your amen from Jesus. That's it. If God said amen, that settles it. It doesn't matter who else agrees. If the one, the one in control agrees. If God agrees, if God said it, there's going to be tons of people who don't agree. They don't see it because, check it out. Man sees the outside. God sees the inside. Keep that dream he gave you on the inside. Keep that vision that God gave you on the inside. Don't let it go until it comes to pass. Because it's not only going to affect you. It's going to affect everybody around you. Did you know that there's a network of people around you that is specifically designed for your life? that I can't reach, that everybody else watching right now can't reach, that these people in this Starbucks can't reach. So when you answer your call, you help them to answer their call. It could become like a party call and we all answer in our call. That's the type of squad I wanna roll with. It's like we all got our phone to our ear because we're all answering the call of God on our life. It's like Avengers. We're all out here, mighty men, mighty women of God, answering the call that God has for our life. And we can help other people up. You know what I'm saying? God is good. God is good. Cheers. I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for hopping in. I'm glad I hopped in this morning. I wasn't sure if I was going to, but I want to let you know, write down your vision and make it plain. The Bible says write down your vision. I want everybody watching right now to write something down. What's up, Kid Sosi? I want everybody watching right now to write something down, even if you already wrote something down. Everybody watching, go in your phone and write something down. Let God give you. God is going to show you something right now. I declare it and I believe it for your future. Go in your phone and write it down. You don't know how it's going to happen. Go and write it down in Jesus Christ's mighty name. And the last thing I'm going to say before I close, everybody write something down. I'm telling everybody watching right now, go write something down that God's showing you for your future. Go write it down. Seriously, don't don't resist the Lord. Go write down what God is showing you to write down for your future. Sheesh. Woo! My God, thank you, Jesus. The last thing I want to say, the ultimate vision for your life. When I was on drugs and I was not following the Lord and I was just beginning to follow Christ and I'm about to end. This is the last point I want to say. God gave me a vision for the rest of my life. The final vision for my life is the end mark. So when you have a vision, you have the end in mind, right? If you're going to go make a peanut butter jelly sandwich, you have a peanut butter jelly sandwich in your mind. If you're going to go talk to a girl, you have that in your mind. If you're going to make a song, a video. You, so the end that I need to have in mind and that you need to have in mind the ultimate vision for your life is I'm going to serve Jesus till I die. On my last breath, on my deathbed, I will have lived a life glorifying God. I will have lived a life answering God's call on my life. Whatever that means, whatever financial status that means, whatever popularity that means, whatever friend circle that means, whatever church that means, whatever city that means, I'm going to live God's plan for my life. To the day I die, that's my end goal. If you ever feel lost, remember your end goal. When you have an end goal, check it out. Simple demonstration. If I'm gonna walk to that chair, that's my end goal. Everything else is gonna work itself out in the middle because I know my end goal. I might have to walk around some gum. I might have to walk around some haters, but I know my end goal. I keep my angle in mind, and I'm going to get there. I'm going to get to my chair. Keep your vision in mind, everybody. I love you guys. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, let's go.